just trying to remember. I know it wasn't Mike Tyson, a boxer who had that grill. Oh, George, George Foreman. Foreman. Yeah, George Foreman. But now that I say that out loud, I realize that it wasn't even George Foreman. It was some other like daytime TV infomercial thing that I would have seen on a Saturday after the cartoons were over. That was the like, set it and forget it. Some kind of cooking device. Probably just like a toaster oven that had a timer attached to it. Like not even an impressive item, but yeah, that's what comes to mind. Is that what was in mind when you were thinking of that phrase as well? Set it and forget it for your bagpipes? It's another one of those things that you say that I said that I don't remember. And also, <laughs> I'm not sure I want, I'm not sure I did say that. So I'm not sure you want credit for that, huh? <laughs> no. Well, and if I did say that, it's like the other, I forget what we said the other day, but it was like, it was the tone zone. Oh, yeah, the tone. Yeah, no. <laughs> Did that one not grow on you over time? As you thought about it more, mm -hmm. we're like, no, actually, that's pretty good. <laughs> nope. Did not. So I want vindication, and Andrew Douglas would like to be liberated from any possible blame for having said, <laughs> said it and forget it about bagpipes. I've said a lot of wild and crazy stuff over the last 10, 15 years. Yeah. They're like all recorded for infinite posterity on the internet. Yeah, <laughs> ain't that the worst? <laughs> It's all digital so, too. The, like it, it's not even going to lose fidelity over time. It's just <laughs> in all it's, of its HD glory. Yeah, exactly. So, but the idea there is, if I may, so not, not attributing set it and forget it to Andrew Douglas, but some good advice. This can be attributed to Andrew Douglas. Any good advice that comes hereafter is acceptable. And that would be something like, maybe it's kind of like our episode we did a while ago where it was like, are you in tune? Who cares? It's like, Play a bit, let stuff get warmed up and kind of, you know, a little steamy inside your bagpipes, et cetera. And then maybe let it just soak in for a bit. Don't yeah. stress too much right away. Yeah, should that so, mean put your bagpipes down and go do something else? Or should it mean just mm -hmm. keep playing and don't stress about it? Yeah, so uh, that's a really, that's a big thing I learned. One of the good things about going to the worlds and not qualifying, basically mm. going to the worlds and not being good enough not getting to play in the final, which we did for many years with Oren Moore and with the Stuart Highlanders as well. You'd go, you'd play in the grade one qualifier, and then you'd get cut and you wouldn't play in the finals. But the good thing about that is it allows you to then spend the afternoon watching the bands that are good and seeing what they're doing. And I remember over the years picking up on the fact that Richard in particular, Field Marshal Montgomery, like, why aren't they doing anything? And just remember that. Wait, they're just like standing around. So it's like, why are they just standing there and they're not doing anything? And over, over time, you start to realize that actually not playing is a huge part of getting warmed up. And there's a lot to that that I don't think we'll get into today. But giving your bagpipe time to just settle in, or a word that I sometimes use is acclimatize, right? Giving your bagpipe a chance to acclimatize to the environment that you're going to play in can really shorten the amount of time that you have to play. And it can really help you manage some of the some of the key challenges, right? We all know if you play too much, especially if it's cold outside, you're going to get condensation all over your pipes and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And so, yeah. And then if you can manage to acclimatize your bagpipes and get them comfortable and get them to return to their ideal state, you can also spend a lot, and by a lot, I mean a lot, you can spend a lot less time tuning, right? Because once you're good at this acclimatization process, you can sort of have confidence that if my bagpipes were in tune yesterday, they will return to being in tune today. So especially as you become better and better at tuning, it's easier and easier to just get your pipes out. You don't like how they sound and you start tuning your pipes right away. In particular, the different chanter notes. So, oh, my C yeah. is sharp. Okay, put some tape on the C. Cool, blah, blah, blah. And then what you'll notice though, however, is that same C that you messed with at the beginning of the practice session, if you play long enough, you got to undo it all later. And that's yeah, because we sort of... undo everything you did. Yeah. yeah. And that's because we're rushing the process and that we're not understanding and embracing the idea that the bagpipe's going to play and live in a certain environment. And if we can wait to do anything until that environment is there, if we can wait, then we'll have a lot less to do. That's so interesting. It sounds so much like a... What would you say? How would you call it? Like this? It's almost like a motif, almost like a scene that you can see in, in almost any kind of like discipline, martial arts or basketball, any of our favorites, right? Where the rookie is like really in their head about a thing, you know, and like stressing about it and like running around trying to make the thing work. And the master is like 
sitting back. Something about the confidence that comes with mastery, maybe. Is, yeah. is part Have you ever seen The Big Year, the movie? I just watched it about just the recently. Birds. It's about birding, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that just uh, Owen Wilson's character you're describing perfectly. He's just the master. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. And he's such, a, such an interesting character. He, like, totally under, he understands birding to just this unreal, like, super virtuosic level. Which, by the way, reminds me of Bagpipers, too. It's like, of all the things you could master, why would you choose this? <laughs> it makes no yeah. damn sense. But anyway... <laughs> Yeah, that reminds me of Owen Wilson's character. Because then you have Jack Black and Steve Martin. They're running around going crazy trying to get the big year. Right. And like Owen Wilson is just like. Pretty he's, chill he's about it. As Owen Wilson seems to be. His name's Bostic. Bostic. Right. Yeah. yeah. Freaking Bostic. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great move. It's such an underrated movie. It wasn't what I was expecting. I ended up very much enjoying it, but definitely wasn't what I was expecting. When oh, I it's a it. masterpiece. I've seen it several yeah. times. For but, people who play bagpipes, the, the big year is. It's about, that movie is about bagpipes. And that's so funny because I think that's part of why my wife was enjoying it was witnessing like this other expression of like, you know, so much of like my time as a husband and father and our family's financial resources has gone into my obscure hobby. And For so sure. Maybe there's like some vindication happening there or something. Well, and then the guy, the bird nerd that brings his new wife to the Alaskan right. it, island. As if for it the were honeymoon. like a honeymoon or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. totally. Bagpipes. It's great. How many of us have taken our romantic interest with us to a full day of competing at a Scottish festival and be like, aren't you having a great yeah. time? Isn't this the best? <laughs> nope, not really. Actually, it brought you a things. camper chair. The shopping is underwhelming, to say the least. <laughs> But yeah. okay, so where were what were we even talking about? Well, that that's where I'm at, Andrew, with like my quote unquote. Ma I was gonna say mastery. I should say journey. Right? Is that like right. I kind of understand tuning? Right? I'm like kind of understanding how to tune my bagpipes, and so I definitely fall into this trap over and over again, where I get my pipes out and go to play, and immediately I'm going, I'm listening close and trying to fix things. And that can be so frustrating because really mm -hmm. what I want to do is play my pipes. So I have yep. this feeling like, well, I've got to tune them before I play them. And, but then my, my haste to do the tuning means I actually end up tuning twice. And that means I get that much less mm -hmm. time just playing because I tune Correct. it. And then I play a bit and then I have to retune it. And it's time to put them up. And I hardly got yes, to play. Exactly right. And that's the big idea. So your bagpipe is going to take some time before it's settled in and ready to go. Hang on, I have a prop. Hang on one sec. Oh, okay, perfect. By the way, my prop has a my prop has a magnet on it. So I gotta mm -hmm. make sure not to put it near my computer. So anyway, here's my prop. It's this thing right here. So I have a whole bunch of these things. And they Is it a humidity thing? It's a hygrometer. It's got a humidity and it's got the temperature on there. Can you see it? Mm. It's got yeah. And it being in the middle of ultra cold February here in New York, the ambient humidity in this room is 10%, otherwise known as extremely dry. Like my lips are all chapped and all that sort mm -hmm. of fun stuff. By the way, why do your lips get chapped when it's dry? Any, anybody who knows, please write it and tell us because we both want to know. No, I know. It's because... Oh, the, it's, <laughs> it's, not, because it's a rhetorical the, question. <laughs> it's because the air around you is literally extracting that nice natural moisture from your skin. It's like, a, mm. I, it's not actually, I think it's not, I think it's diffusion. I don't think it's osmosis, but it's like the exact same thing. So yeah. the you're seeking that moisture equilibrium so yeah. the air will literally extract moisture from your skin right the environment is sucking you dry <laughs> that's right that's exactly right but it's super relevant right so if i start to play my pipes right now i could even give my reed a big nice wet lick but if i start to play my pipes right now if they're sitting out on the table it's also 10 percent humidity inside my bag inside my bagpipes right yeah so what's going to happen to any sort of moisture in any of the reeds at first well because it's it, so dry that it's going to be mm. actively sucking moisture out of that otherwise known as it's not going to be stable there's going to be th wacky stuff going on inside my pipes so i wouldn't want to start to do any wild and crazy tuning right at the very beginning because things aren't stable anyway so i've got my by the way my hygrometer just jumped up to 17 percent I've been Is holding that just it in from my being close to yeah, like close That's to right. your skin and stuff, close to you. Yeah. That's right, my friend. And I'm assuming so. And now it's back to eleven. And it's not because it's malfunctioning. It's just the wherever the sensor is must have been closer to my skin. 
which is of course mm. a, has a lot higher moisture co content, blah, 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 so on and so forth, et cetera, et cetera. So anyway, the bagpipe is a wild and crazy instrument because everything operates from that internal environment inside of the bag. That's where mm. everything basically comes from, right? The reeds exist in that separate environment. It doesn't exist in this room. It exists inside a different room, inside of the bag. And right. then just a little pop quiz for you, Jim. When you play the bagpipes, when things are stable, what, is the, what are the conditions inside your bagpipe? Warm and... Uh, How warm? Can you be more specific? About, about the same as my body temperature, which I have a hard Amen. time remembering. Is that 94 degrees? It's Fahrenheit? 98. But let's, 98. Just, well, let's just round for the ease of math, Jim. 100, 100, degrees, degrees. 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And then, by the way, I have no idea what that is in Celsius. Uh, maybe some of our super. We don't know, and we do don't have version. to know. <laughs> yeah. Well, it does help to. It actually is a huge pain in the butt trying to talk to people in Inverary about this because they're like, "What the hell do you mean a hundred degrees? You fool!" <laughs> so, but yeah. anyway, it is. And it I have actually a hard time watching Great British Baking Show because they're like, "It's at thirty yeah. degrees." I'm like, "That's yeah. way too cold." What is that? Great British Baking Show. God. Bake Off, I should say. Yeah. I, I'm oh, no. so good but at derailing anyway, these. I'm so good at it. <laughs> so it's getting really warm. When your bagpipe is stable, it's going to be 100 degrees inside that bag, which isn't actually definitely true, but it's a good sort of like model. And then what about the humidity inside the bag? Whatever the humidity level is of my body, but I don't know. what It's more it's be or less. More than it, 10. Well, <laughs> more it's 10%. more or less give or take. Okay. It's more or less give or take fully saturated air which is 100% humidity, more or less, give yeah. or take, mm. okay? So that's high. So anyway, my point is, let's just take this as a default. There's always the debate of the wet versus a dry blower and this and that and blah, blah, blah. But like, generally speaking, your bagpipe is going to go to 100 degrees inside and it's going to get to 100% fully saturated air, okay? Now, until we reach that point, okay, the environment inside the bag is not going to be stable. It's constantly okay. changing until it it's, gets to that point. It's going to change and change until it gets to that point. Okay. As a matter of fact, most pipe bands perform not at that point. Most pipe bands will actually perform with the temperature in their bag decidedly less than 100 degrees. And that we, that's a rabbit hole we can get down some other day. But my point is, that's what we're working with there. Right. Mm. And what we want to do is we want to stabilize that environment inside the bag as much as possible before we start to like tune, before we start to do these important things. We want to stabilize yeah. the instrument as much as we reasonably can. Okay. And that's where this idea of acclimatization or set it and forget it. Just hang on while I vomit for a second. <laughs> just this whole idea of set it and forget it really comes in. So what we can do and what I'll always do, asterisk. What I'll always do is I'll play for five to 10 minutes on my bagpipe, okay? And then I'm going to let my bagpipe rest and like chill for a minute while the rest of my instrument starts to acclimatize a little bit. And then later I'll pick up my pipes and start to work towards getting myself fully warmed up and stabilized and in tune, okay? Because so, yep, go ahead. Go ahead. What does that look like? That like when you, so like you play for five or 10 minutes, then do you like put them down and go, make a mug of coffee or do yep. you always have your practice channel there so you can run through a tune while you're waiting for it to sit? Yeah. So I, I have pours, kind of I a, know. I have a weird situation where I work in here and I do a lot of work. So during peak season, what I do is I usually kind of play my pipes for five to 10 minutes. Then I go do a little bit of work. Kind of some emails or something. Yeah. And then, and then 10 or 15 minutes later, I come back and I play five or 10 more minutes Then I go do some you work. Know, and so I just kind of all like, of us, but, Sorry, I keep cutting you off. Go ahead, Andrew. No, go ahead. What was your thought? It just made me excited to think to myself, like a lot of us are working from home where we hadn't before. Mm -hmm. Maybe there are more, maybe there are ever more of us in a situation where we can have a set of pipes with us sitting next to us at the office yeah. and do that kind of thing. Yep, exactly. And so anyway, I spread my practice out throughout the day oftentimes. Not always. Sometimes it takes more than 10 to 15 minutes to get to get into stuff. So it, this doesn't always work, but that tends to be, especially when it comes to getting my Inverary instrument going, that tends to be mm. my routine. It's kind of like 10, 15 minutes on, then maybe do a little bit of work or something. Or to your point, oftentimes what I'll do is I'll play for a few minutes, 
let them soak. That's what we call it. I let the pipes soak in the moisture and whatever and rest for a little bit. And then I'll often grab my digital chanter and then play along with some recent band practice recordings mm. and just jam along with the tunes and make sure I'm up to speed on how people are doing things and staying up to speed with what's going on. And then once I'm done with a little bit of that, then I'll go have a more proper practice session there. But it's amazing to my point earlier, I hardly ever do anything, Jim. I remember one year I went like the whole month of July. The days kept ticking by. I never tuned my pipes a single time. For That's the beautiful. I mean, it makes sense. Like once yes. they're set up, they should stay set up. Why not? Well, and they don't. So when you first start, and, inter- and it, it was an interesting experiment. I remember the first few days, it was like, huh, I'm just going to leave these and not tune them and see what happens. So, so you felt tempted to do the tuning, but you decided to Of course, hold... because when you start, they're not, not going to be in. Just so not... every time you struck them in, they were not in tune at first. Yeah, exactly. The chanter would be a little bit flat relative to the drones probably. And then the drones, because I'm playing cane drone reads, the drones did not start off in tune, but anyone who plays cane will know that bass drone, it starts off a little dry and then it'll take on some moisture and then it actually will come into tune with the tenors with a little bit of moisture and a little bit of play time. So anyway, you just play and see what happens and they would come really nicely into tune. And the first couple of days I was like, man, that's really cool. But then the days and weeks started to add up where it's like, this just happening the same way every single day. Now, mm. it's not always going to be the case. One of the things, right, during summertime, one of the things is that the conditions in this actual practice space were identical every single day. So mm. that's, a big, that's a big factor. So I'm not saying everybody's going to be able to do this all the time, but this is like this sort of weird Petri dish, all scientifically actually ends up being pretty much the same every single day. And so you can expect the bagpipe to behave in the exact same way every single day. But anyway, that gives me a lot more confidence with the whole sort of like process and the whole set it and forget it thing. There's more to it, right? Like we can go way down this rabbit hole, but the basic idea is, yeah, let your pipes, play them a little bit, get some air going through them, right? And then just leave them out in the environment that you're going to play in and let them sit there and marinate for 10 to 20 minutes before you do your proper, you know, the, the core part of your practice. And I bet you'll see some really good results.